Dr. Bill Deagle and I'm back and our special guest is Cliff Harris, our nuclear expert talking about the latest disaster that's brewing in Japan with Fukushima. Uh, Chris, tell us the latest what's happening and notice you just sent me this morning that precipitated me doing a panic call to get your latest update on what's really going on there with not only the burning of hundreds of millions of tons of trash, but the coming typhoon and the planned evacuation of over a million Japanese. Well, that sort of caught my eye, you know, when I was uh, scrolling through trying to get a, a decent update, and uh, there was a, I, I had to check it several different ways because I couldn't believe my eyes. It looks like Typhoon Oroki, I think that's how you pronounce it, is uh, heading right probably by tomorrow, you know, because they said, you see, that was yesterday. It's 48 hours, they said, so it's got to be by tomorrow, uh, or even this evening, uh, my time. So it, uh, a huge typhoon looks like it's going to strike in the Fukushima prefect, prefect and uh, that will cause a lot of problems there. Yeah, now, a lot of problems are the least. Uh, they, yeah, they started mobilizing trash. And we, I don't know how they're going to do that. The last three weeks they've been burning the trash of the debris from the buildings. They've right. been doing a thing called averaging, where they take very radioactive debris, containing lots of cesium-137 plus other isotopes, averaging with less radioactive debris and say, well, it's okay to burn it, which is against international law and the IAEA and the International Court of Justice, and they need to be sued. So TEPCO and the, and the prefecture and the other politicians there that think it's okay to burn radioactive trash need to be strung up. They need to be sued. They need to be put in jail. It's a criminal activity. It's a world of sanity. And then on top of that, they didn't. They send people back to radioactive homes and communities where they are getting significantly exposed, not even having dosimetry cards on them, and children are literally blowing their noses and getting bloody noses, and people are getting massive accumulative toxic overdose that's going to cause extreme problems with the population of this area of northern Japan, plus the offshore effect that Dr. Busby's talked about, pushing the radioisotopes at least five kilometers in, will in fact with radioisotopes the entire eastern seaboard of Japan. They're also poisoning us here in America, poisoning the Europeans, and here in the west coast of the United States they've stated from reports the last few weeks that we are more radioactive than western coast of Japan, which means we're significantly being slowly boiled in radioisotopes from the prefecture of Fukushima caused by the inaction not only of the Japanese but the international community to deal with this disaster. Well, you, you remember, you know, there, uh, one of the things uh, I was reading was uh, it was actually I tried I tried I tried to read several news sources so I can find out what's credible or not. And this goes back to a Bloomberg news article, a, a business article of just today, and it talks about thousands of gallons of water from the rain itself is getting into the plant and it's causing radioactive runoff. Now, I did the did the due diligence and pulled out. From April 28th, something I, I put together a list for you, some of the things that I would like to see done. And one of them was construct a cover over the plant so that you don't get rainwater. And you thought I was nuts. You said, Chris is nuts. Yeah, because, we, uh, we're both thinking along the same nuts thing. But I was thinking more of a Kevlar spider silk tent, not a solid structure, because a solid structure won't deal with small hydrogen explosions or release. You need something with a high tensile strength that won't blow apart in little pieces. Uh, right. like this so-called framework structure they're setting up that's not going to withhold a hydrogen-based explosion or a critical event that actually will cause a, nu a, a mini-nuclear type of explosion as well. Well, or, or a typhoon for that matter. It's not going to hold up. Or a typhoon, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a tent I mean, would. A tent would withstand a typhoon, but a solid structure will not. Yeah, and so, you know, that that was one of, one of my main concerns. You know, you would ask, what do you do to, to minimize the, the waste? And I said, you've got to stop clean water from getting in. And it looks like uh, th that they're, they're actually trying to do that. I don't know what took them so long, but that would have been a priority of mine to recover the place because anything clean you add to the contaminated plant is going to come out. And the article discusses cracks in the, in the structure of Unit 1, 2, and 3, and four, because even the spent fuel pool is, is leaking. So, you know, uh, it, it made good sense to me to go ahead and cover that thing up somehow. And uh, they're working towards it. But now, now the typhoon's here. It does rain in Japan, and uh, unfortunately, that's you know that's that's what we're seeing right now. So, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know. Uh, well, well, let's see. What was I? Where was right, I? Here, let, let, let me go over to some of the key issues here. North America, we have increased. We had a really a summer out of hell. We had extreme weather to put a number of nuclear plants. And we can go down through the list. Uh, we had the uh, uh, the uh, plants in Tennessee, Virginia, all over the place in jeopardy in in uh, in uh, the central United States along the Mississippi River from flooding. We had all kinds of events, and we yet, and we've had this North Annan reactor that exceeded their reactor safety limits, so they can't restart it because they don't know if it's structurally sound. So, and that was caused by an earthquake, which is really unusual in that area. So they don't even know what caused it. The fact is, we have not, in a public way, dealt with the entire committee of the NRC moving forward with immediate plans to increase safety standards. Power back up is very minimal. They're edging it up. Well, we'll go from four hours to eight hours. Maybe we'll do this or that. They're putting what I call, you know, lipstick on a pig. They're, 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 they're whitewashing the situation, trying to think that if they just cosmetically deal with it, the public will forget it. And that's not good policy, is it? Uh, not at all. You know, Arnie Gunderson had a quote saying that the NRC is... Uh is the agency that's uh, most responsible for uh, doing nothing. And, and, and the IAEA. The, I, the IAEA were responsible in Japan as well because they whitewashed the issues and wouldn't speak about it. And then we had corporations like General Electric, uh, Mr. Imelt, who said, we're going to get Fukushima and the Sendai reactors back up. I'm thinking, why not? This guy is obviously not with it at all, is he? Not not at all. You know, and I, I listen to, you know, it seems like the, the NRC's got like an A team and a B team, you know, and, and the, the meeting that I listened to today was, uh, that was, I think that was, was like more their A team. Uh, today, today there was a public meeting held, and it was for the uh, industry's take on the recommendations for Fukushima and what they would do. And I could go, I could talk for a really long time on that because it was a very interesting meeting, and a lot of it came down to the recommendations that my team, in fact, you know, today I, I talked about this before that there was a, there was a special project. There was about 20 of us in the country that were ca capable of doing this, and we went out and to different power plants and said, "What would you do if a monstrous event happened at a power plant like that?" Right? You know, so. Uh, uh, and, and, and you know Joe was one of the team members, and you know some of the other guys were other team members on it. All, uh, these guys actually, they, they were all watching the meeting. They all gave me a call today, which is pretty funny, or some emails, and they said, hey, look at that. They're using our recommendations. So uh, that, that's, that's nice to know that they're using it a little late because they had those recommendations for a long time, and they're uh, kind of arguing and gnashing teeth over whether they're going to make them requirements or not. You know, well, that, what that we need to do is we almost need to have a preemptive... Uh, grand jury indictments of the incompetence of what's going on right now because if we don't have some kind of set of special senate or congressional committee with open hearings that go on CPAC I think we're in dire straits I think some extreme weather event in the next year earthquake, tsunami, God knows what uh, is going to happen and we're going to see a good chunk of the United States become a nuclear wasteland like the zone of alienation around Chernobyl it's a hundred and some square thousand square miles you, know, only, you only live there if you're a mutant mouse. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. there was the meeting uh, last week, and I definitely listened in on that one. It was, it's a public meeting. All, all your listeners can just go ahead and get it. And right. uh, some of the, there, there was a, one fellow in there that actually stands out, a fellow named uh, Dr. Thomas Cochran. He was an independent look at the North Anna plant, and a uh, very interesting fellow. He was like the... He was like a crusty old codger that he knew his stuff. There's no question about it. And uh, he didn't hold back either. And if he, if he's worth a listen. I can definitely send you some clips from, from him. But he said, you know, you guys in the NRC want to tell these guys what they need to do. And these guys need to do it. And that's just, that was the bottom line. He's my new hero for sure. Absolutely. Keep that thought. We'll be back in a moment, Chris. We need to talk about what's going on in Japan now when we return. They plan on evacuating a million Japanese from the storm, the typhoon coming into the nuclear Fukushima prefecture. And we're back with Chris Harris. Uh, we're dealing with a population literally sitting in the gun sites of a typhoon coming toward Japan. Uh, the western United States is being slowly roasted with radioactivity and Canada heading toward Europe and it's dumping all over the entire northern hemisphere 
the problem is that we don't have a level of alert by the government officials or the politicians or the regular snooze they called the put people to sleep the what's going to happen when these structures like we mentioned on the break here that reactor number three you can see the open Dry sore water. of the of the wet well actually blown off into the side so there's a nuclear explosion that occurred there we have up to 60 kilometers away plutonium particles some of them are fairly large that were found we've got a million people that are going to try to evacuate in, a, in the face of this typhoon that's going to irradiate them and they've now reported a few weeks ago three weeks ago that the radiation levels in the western united states and canada are higher than in western japan i mean if well, people I'm aren't not alarmed, surprised. I mean, you know, this is, uh, I was alarmed by the by this event. I said, I don't even know how bad it's going to get, but it's certainly not going to get better by itself. You know, the the makeshift systems, and we talked about you're going to have to make a makeshift system to do all to mimic all the functions that were lost due to the, the equipment that was lost, have been reconstructed somewhat. They're not really working 100%, but basically what they do is they, uh, they, they take water, they reclaim, they try to reclaim as much as they can. They run it through filters, which filter out the cesium and everything else, and uranium and particles and everything else, which become really, really uh, 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 contaminated themselves and become hot spots themselves. And now you're going to subject this flimsy system to a typhoon. It wasn't built to handle that. This is a temporary makeshift measure. It's a flimsy system that you're putting together. I mean, even if it works great uh, for a while, what do you do when it uh, when you subject it to something that's coming right now or aftershocks or anything else? Stuff's not seismically built. So you could have uh, one of the that they're using flexible hoses, basically. I mean, they're they're high quality flexible hoses, but they break, and you go ahead and have a. Uh, uh, a typhoon come by, and it'll just break apart one of the uh, flexible hoses. Now you have all this runoff running straight into the, uh, yeah, the and you, side. And you also have to look at what the what the yard is. There's hundreds of these little containers with hoses connecting them, right. and they're loaded up with radioactive water. So radioactive that if they ever burst, anybody walking by them for a matter of a minute or two would die virtually almost instantly. And this water is going to be released into the Pacific. It's going to be mobilized into the air. It's going to like we're facing something that in some ways may be actually worse than the original explosion of Fukushima. Uh, well, if that breaks, what happens is it's a direct path from coming from the inside the reactor of units one, two, and three to straight to just a straight shot to the to the uh, sea. There's yeah. nothing to stop it. The sea and the air, of course, when the typhoon picks it up, it's going to mobilize into the atmosphere, and those plumes of radiation are going to come directly toward us in North America. Right. Uh, why don't? Why isn't this idiot president have a mobilization force like the Manhattan Project, going over, taking over control of the situation, building a spider silk Kevlar tent over it, uh, building an under corium catcher and moats upon moats around it so it doesn't get out to the sea, doesn't get under to the groundwater table, doesn't create giant what I call superheated radioactive jets that can go tens of kilometers away from the Fukushima site, and we now know that this uh, situation. It's no end in future. In fact, uh, TEPCO, the latest reports from Neotokan is that three days after it, they were literally ready to walk because there were other, quote, black projects going on on the site, which means they're developing uh, new types of exotic nuclear weapons. They were doing all kinds of other experiments and things, and the, uh, the TEPCO people were literally saying, we're going to walk. We're not even going to stay around here. We're just going to leave this nuclear sore, and these plants just go critical and explode, go China syndrome. Can you talk about that for a minute? Because when I saw those reports, I think, this is a lot worse than I even imagined. Yeah, well, the, you know, the TEPCO walking, and you, you actually told me about that, and I looked at it, I said, yep, that was one of my biggest fears. I said, why shouldn't they walk? Why, could, why shouldn't they just say, well, well I, thought, I remember a long time ago, I said, nobody really knows what to do about this. There isn't anybody that really knows, and I, I still stand by that. And I said, we're way outside the box right now. And uh, it, it, based on that information that I definitely verified that TEPCO had, they, were, they wanted to pull up and run. Uh, they didn't know what to do either. And now you asked about the uh, a, a response organization. Well, oddly enough, just uh, last week, part of the, another Fukushima meeting was that uh, a recommendation was that they were going to have some kind of a global kind of a... Uh, task force that would be able to have trained people to come in and respond to